So, this is my tarantula. She's in there eating right now. But this is um, some tips on how to take care of her. She is a curly haired tarantula. So, oh, there she is coming out. Look at her move. <laughs> so, curly haired tarantulas, um, they definitely like the heat a lot more, so they would do good in a warmer environment. Definitely somewhere around the 70s, even 80s. She's going to drink some water. So what I use for water for her, the actual taking care of her is really easy. It's the crickets that can be difficult to deal with. But as far as the tarantula, she's very easy to deal with. Um, so when it comes to things like the water, um, I just use a bottle cap of like, that's, that's from a, um, a spice cap just for like spices. Um, so I just put that in there and then you put water in it. It's really good to change her water out like every two days, just reach in there and take the bottle cap out, rinse it out, put it back in there. And then I fill it up with this and um, that's just extra water in here. So this is like a little spray bottle that I use to mist her enclosure with. And then I also open up the cap and pour the water in. Um, so this in here, well, okay, no, actually. So I keep the humidity at around, yeah, right about there, around 60 for humidity. It can even get up into the 70s, but she's more of a desert tarantula, so not super tropical or anything, so you don't need to worry about super uh, spraying down her cage or anything like that. Um, so somewhere between like 50 and 70 is pretty good as far as humidity goes. Um, so again, I just spray that in there and just watch that gauge right there. Another thing that helps add in more humidity because if it's not like humid enough and you're like, man, I'm spraying this cage down like every day and it just dries up and it's it doesn't stay humid and that's really frustrating. So adding some of this moss in there is a really great idea. So for that, the moss that I use is no, it's this. So the moss that I use looks like this. And that's just good for tarantulas and their enclosures. So I put some of that in there and that just helps keep it nice and humid. Uh, don't be surprised if she rearranges it. So for cage setup, um, I make it to where she has like a little tunnel to go in of some sort. Sorry, this reflection is horrid right now. It's really hard to see anything with the reflection and the um reflection okay so here we go you can see that that's her little tunnel so she just goes in there so what I do is I just kind of start it for her when I first set this enclosure up I just started a little tunnel for her and then she finished it out so have giving them a place to hide is, is essential because it just makes her feel more comfortable and um you never want to put a tarantula in somewhere and not give them a place to go under or hide. It's kind of like, it's like, you know, you don't want to have a, a house with no roof or a house with no walls. You want a place to be able to sleep comfortably at night and it makes you feel safe and cozy. So that's just her little safe space right in there. Another thing to keep in mind is um, occasionally... Uh, you might get little bugs in here, like little mites or little things that looks like kind of like fruit flies or something. They're not in here right now, so I can't really show you, but if that does happen, it's because you need to change the substrate in here. So that does need to be changed out. They say like once a month, 
But if a month goes by and you're not seeing any bugs or anything and she seems fine, then it's fine. The only thing I would really look out for is like when this water... I like to overflow it and you are supposed to keep the bottom substrate like kind of wet to help with humidity and stuff like that but um but I just spray it down and stuff and it's okay that that corner is wet so um and I let it overflow when I pour it so that kind of helps but yeah so just watch out for like mold and stuff because that's definitely not good if there's mold in there so just keep an eye on the substrate and what it looks like because that'll tell you a lot and if it does get, like, if you do need to change it out, then go ahead and and um, take everything out. Put her in a different enclosure. Um, I just put her in the same box that I got her in. So if I ever need to switch anything out, like, this is the thing that I got her in. I bought her in this. So I just put her in that for a little bit, for, like, 30 minutes. And clean that out. And the last time I put the substrate in there, it got like all over the sides, which is why it's so dirty in there. And I never like went back through and like wiped it down. So that's why that's there. But, um, so yeah, you just want to change the substrate out like probably like once or twice or like every other month or something is probably pretty good. The substrate. I can't remember. I don't have the bag for that, unfortunately. Um, but it's just, you just go to the pet store and it has a, it's substrate for like tarantulas and stuff. It's very easy to find at the pet store. If you're not sure, then you can ask somebody, but it is called substrate for tarantulas. So you can just ask them for that. So that's pretty much all there is for her. The second half to taking care of a tarantula is, um, is keeping the crickets nice and happy and alive. So the crickets, this is when it gets complicated because, because of them. So what I do is I put some, a leaf in there of like spinach of some sort right in there. And then I will also I will also spray it down. It's really hard to do this with <laughs> one hand. Um, I need a GoPro. That'd be great. So I just spray that, mist it a little bit, um, just so that they have some fresh water in there. And then that misty water should condense at some point and form like little droplets that they can drink. Um, this claims to have everything it needs food and water and blah 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 and you only put this in there and that's all they'll ever need and that's a lie they don't like every time I just put this in there literally all of the crickets die within like a day or two and it's really bad so so what I do is I put one of those in there but also I spray some water and I also put a fresh leaf in there and then I change that out as needed and replace it with a new one. You can also put a potato slice in there. That can really help um, and keep them alive. But what I really like this um, cage, this enclosure though, because they'll go up into these tubes and then you just grab the tube, put it in here, pop it and the cricket goes in and then she eats. So that's really easy. Um, so yes, that's the crickets. As far as feeding her, um, a lot of people will say feed her, like, one large cricket a week. And I'm like, you know, I don't do that. Like, some people do that, but it really depends on your spider. I'm going to feed her as much as she'll eat because if you do, you can do that. Um, technically, humans can go, what, like a month without eating or no 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 it's not that it's technically humans can go like they can survive a few days without eating some humans can survive a week some can even survive a month but just because we can survive a few days or a week without eating doesn't mean that it's comfortable or favorable to us so same thing with tarantulas just because you can 
feed them or they can go two months without eating doesn't mean they should. That can be very, very stressful for them, so just don't do it. That that will get them into, like, little spider ketosis survival mode. <laughs> Not the best. So what I do is I get either a few large crickets, or they didn't have any large today, so I just got medium. But what I do, this is the schedule that I have her on that, I, that she really, really likes, is I get five medium or large crickets, whatever they have available. And I usually don't go over five or six because if you do, they're going to die any... They usually don't last more than five or six days. They just die off really fast. Like, if you can make a cricket survive for two weeks, then please get more. But this also... This is a very small cricket cage, so it only has the capacity for so many crickets. You also really don't want to overcrowd the cricket cage. They do need a, a bit of... A, quite a bit of space per cricket. So, this is really good for, like, maybe up to ten crickets, but that I wouldn't push it past ten. Um, also, if a cricket dies, you have to take the cricket out of there and dispose of the dead body, um, or else it can, like, infect the other crickets and they all die really fast. So you do have to clean it out daily if anything dies. Now, another thing that I will do is I use chopsticks to fish out any dead crickets. That might be in there um that just helps everything but you can see that they've already started going up into the tunnels Let's see if i can oops, see them this way there they are so they've already started to go up into the tunnels they like the they like it when it's dark in there don't put this by a window or any kind of direct sunlight don't even put her by a window or direct sunlight. That's too much everything. Um, try to keep them in like a partially shaded place. You could even get away with putting these in a closet, the crickets. They don't chirp or anything. They don't keep you up. They're fine. Um, you can, you if you want to, you can get like a giant bin and breed your own crickets. So you never have to go get any again. But that's a huge job and I don't want to do that. So... But anyways, so what I do is I get five crickets and I give her, like, when I get those five crickets, every day I give her a new cricket, right? So I just gave her one a second ago. So tomorrow I will grab a cricket from the thing and I'll drop it in there. Um, and then she eats it. And then the next day, I grab another one, and I drop it in there, and she eats it. And then I grab another one the next day, drop it in there, and she eats it. So she has a full week, like one week off, one, one week on, one week off. So she has like a full week of every day she's eating crickets. And she will, if she's, unless she's rejecting them, like if you put it in there and she just is not interested, which happens around like when she's going to molt, um, then... If she, if she rejects the cricket and doesn't eat it and you come back in a few hours and it's still there, then go ahead and, and just fish it out of there and put it back and then try again the next day. Um, but when she, she just molted like pretty recently, so right now she's kind of like in her prime time of like she's ready to snack. So I'm giving her a cricket every single day and um, until they run out. So I give her like one cricket every five, you know, five days cricket. And when I run out of crickets, then I mark it on my calendar. And I know that she can go a week without eating, comfortably a week without eating, right? So then I mark it on the calendar in the next, like, six or seven days. I'll go back to the store and I will get another five or six crickets. And then I feed her again every day and then she runs out and then I say, okay, in six or seven days, I will get you another five or six crickets, bring it back, feed her one cricket a day, they run out and then you wait another six or seven days and then you go back and you get more. So that's kind of how I do it because it, she is very happy with that schedule. She gets to eat like a bunch in one week and then she's off a week. So 
instead of feeding one cricket a week I just feel like that's just way not enough and that's what they had her on when I first bought her they had her on one cricket a week and she looked very frail and skinny and it's kind of like they were just doing minimum effort to keep her alive and I just didn't think that that was enough so I like to see her abdomen you, you can tell when they have eaten a, a, a good amount because their abdomen will start to swell up a little bit. So if their abdomen is like really small, then they do need more food. So that's why I feed her a cricket a day and then I wait a week and then whatever. I do that pattern. So you do want to see that abdomen a good like thickness, I guess. Um... And then with molting, she is at a place where she, she's probably going to molt like once every six months. So she just molted and it's probably going to be another six months until she molts again. And, th and that was, she molted in March. Um, and I was able to sex her, which is great. It took forever, but I finally, I thought she was a guy for the longest time for when I was trying to, I was like, no, I thought, you know, I intuitively, I thought she was a girl. But as I was like looking around, I was like, oh my God, she might be a guy. I'm not seeing like the little, the little, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a flap. And then after soaking it and putting a flashlight on it and really getting in there with some tweezers, I finally found it. And I found that, that surefire flap in her abdomen and the, and I, um, and that was awesome because I was like, yes, okay. So I was right. My intuition was right. She is a girl. Awesome. So she is a girl. Um, which is great. And it, and that's, that's fun. I love figuring out the gender of tarantulas because it's like this big science experiment. You get to like dissect their um, exoskeleton that they shed off. So that's fun. But anyways, um, so molting, you'll know that she's going to molt because you start to see her abdomen. It does get bigger um, and it'll start to look patchy and, um, like almost like there's patches of hair falling off and she becomes a lot more inactive and she gets my, she might get like a little bit moody and she'll go through that for a good period of time. She might go through that for like a month or two or three. Like she might actually start to really display those symptoms early on. And then, and then eventually she won't eat that much. You'll put a cricket in there and she just won't be interested. So you take it out. Don't just keep putting crickets in there. I, one time I left my tarantula with somebody to babysit and it just so happened to line up at a time that she was ready to, my other tarantula was ready to molt and the person who was babysitting the tarantula didn't understand any of this, even though I left like very like pages of directions and very specific on what to do. Um, so she put a cricket in there and the tarantula rejected the cricket and instead of taking the cricket out she just kept putting more crickets in there and then it got to the point where there were like 10 crickets in this cage and she was just like automatically just like oh do, 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 like just put a cricket in put a cricket in put a cricket in and just like that's what you do you just put a cricket in every single day and it's like oh my god so um so then when the tarantula started to molt the crickets um, bothered her and I don't know what they did, but she died because she was, her molt was disrupted. Um, and so I came back to a dead tarantula because she just kept throwing crickets in there and didn't take any out. And she started molting and that, that can get so dangerous for them. And she did die and it was really sad. So, so you have to be so careful of that. Be very mindful of your tarantula, be receptive of her. Um, if she isn't eating the crickets, please take them out. Don't just keep putting crickets in there. Like, <laughs> Take the crickets out. Um, and then, and then really be mindful of like, oh, she's really going to molt soon. Like I'm, because you'll know that it's get closer to the molting time because she'll start to make webbing all around the enclosure and she'll start to spin more. Now she'll have like a bed of webbing, maybe some more over here, and she'll just start to web more, almost like she's nesting. She's making a nest for herself. And then you'll see what I think that's doing is I think that she's making, number one, a bed for herself so that she's comfortable. But number two, I think the reason that they do spin up webs around them is to possibly catch any 
crickets or bugs that might try to disturb them. So if you think about it, when a tarantula is about to molt, they're very vulnerable. And so they're going to put up a bunch of webbing so that if a cricket does try to get to them, it hopefully gets stuck in the webbing before it gets to them. And then they are undisturbed. But then if there's like a bunch of crickets in there, they're, they don't stand a chance. So you have to be really mindful of that. So when she starts to, you know, her abdomen is starting to flake and she's looking patchy and she's putting up all this like webbing everywhere. She's gonna, she's gonna do this. So be very careful about putting crickets in there. Like, yep. So start like, you know, maybe put one cricket in there. She doesn't eat it. Take it out. Wait a couple days. Try again. If she doesn't eat it, get that cricket out of there. And, um, that's why I like chopsticks. Um, and then you'll come around and you'll see that she is on her back molting. So if she looks dead or she's on her back, do not touch her. Do not disrupt her. Don't even, don't even spray her cage down. Do nothing. Don't do anything. Like, even if you think your tarantula is dead, wait like two days. And I promise she will come back alive. She will resurrect. <laughs> so, um, that's just her molting. Um... You got to be very careful about that process. Um, let her do her thing. You can even watch the process. Last time she molted, she did it in like 30 minutes and I missed it. I, I was so sad because I totally missed it. But, um, but yeah, it's an amazing process to see and witness. So um, just leave her alone. She'll probably do it in under 24 hours. Sometimes it takes longer, but just do, don't disturb them. Let them go. It's fine. They will be on their back. Some, some tarantulas do it on their stomach and it's not the best idea, but do not flip them over. If they decide to do it on their stomach, that's what they want to do and they will molt that way. It's fine. So, so she'll start molting and then, um, just make sure there's no crickets in there. But after the molt, make sure that she has enough water. Like once she has molted, um, go ahead and make sure she has fresh water and take her exoskeleton out. And this is after you know that she's like walking around and she's fine, but give her water because they are very thirsty after they, um, molt. So definitely give them water. Um, so they molt. Oh yeah. And then do not feed after a molt. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not feed them crickets until like a week or two later because their fangs are you'll know you'll see when she molts her fangs are like white so when she has white fangs um she has white fangs and that means that her fangs are just like they're like baby baby fangs like they cannot eat anything it will hurt them it could really damage them do not feed them any crickets they are still extremely vulnerable so do not put any crickets in there. Wait like seven, maybe even 14 days. And then when you see her walking around, maybe she'll come up on the side of the cage and you can see if you can get a good look at her fangs after like seven to 10 days. I think 10 days is a good sweet spot, but look at her fangs after about seven to 10 days. And if they're black and hardened again, then they're fine and you can feed her again. But do not rush into feeding her. She's fine. If anything, all she really needs after molt is just really good fresh water. And, um, and then you can proceed to make sure the humidity is good and everything like that. But just don't feed her. Wait a good 7 to 10 days and then you can start feeding her again gradually. Um, it's almost like they went through a big fasting experience. And, and now they need to start off with that nice juicing and soup before they can go to the other stuff. It's kind of like that. I don't know, weird comparison, but, um, so yeah, so that's, um, a lot about tarantulas, especially curly haired tarantulas. One last thing is if you want to hold her, um, I use like, I don't, I, okay. So tarantulas don't like pokey things like this. So don't like poke at them like this. What you're going to want to do for, um, tarantulas when you want to hold them is I just used like a little piece of like paper like this and I just kind of gradually put that in there and I, I don't know why but out of all the tarantulas I've had they really like a more of like a flat surface like this 
And you can slowly push their legs a little bit and encourage them to walk up the side of the enclosure. If the, she starts kicking hairs at you, then she does not want to be fucked with right now and just, just put her back. Leave her alone. She doesn't want anything right now. They're not very social. Um, so if she starts kicking hairs, just put her back. Don't try to mess with her anymore because she's just irritated at that point and she doesn't, and you know, she might get aggressive. So, but if you put this in there and you start encouraging her and she does crawl out just fine, then you're okay to handle her and just do that. Um, but the, the curly hair tarantulas do have hairs that are not good to, like if she does start kicking hairs, they could get into your skin and irritate your skin. You could breathe it in, it could get into your eyes, and they are a little bit toxic and very irritating. And so I have some seen some extreme cases where people have had to go and get, like, tweeze them out and get some cream. <laughs> it's kind of like worse than a bite because um, those little hairs are are pretty intense, but I've never had an issue with her. They are really great starter tarantulas, <laughs> right after I said that <laughs> they'll kick hairs at you and send you to the hospital. But, um, but other than that, they are really good starter tarantulas. They're very docile. They're really chill. They're easy to handle. Um, but obviously a tarantula doesn't want to be handled every single day. So just try to limit it to like at the most once a week. Um, but I handle her like once a month. So, because she's very chill. I have had more social tarantulas in my time, but she is just not one of those tarantulas. <laughs> she just likes to sit there. I'll take her out, and she just doesn't move. She doesn't walk around. She just sits there. So, she's very inactive. Um, but that's pretty much it when it comes to this curly-haired tarantula. It's a good, um, kind of, like, all-encompassing starter guide because... You know, you can watch a bunch of videos, but they just don't have, like, I just found a lot of this different information everywhere, and I just decided to just, just condense it all into one spot, because I did have to find out the hard way about a lot of this. A lot of tarantula videos have a lot of, like, missing information that is very essential that I didn't find out until later, or with further research, and I'm like, well, damn, they could have, like, said that in their, you know, intro videos, so I feel like that's just a really good wrap up of like just the basics of having tarantulas and having crickets and especially the, like a starter curly haired tarantula like that is pretty much in a, in a wrap up everything that you need to know for this kind of tarantula. So I hope this is helpful and precise. There's, it's simple. There's once you get to the swing of it. It's easy. It seems overcomplicated at first, but once you get into the hang of it, it's really simple and it's very routine and they're very low maintenance creatures. So the tropical tarantulas are pretty high maintenance, like the pink toe tarantulas. So that's why I like these because they're way more, they're better for like situations like this where we're in Texas and it's very hot outside sometimes. Um, but in the winter when it gets cold, I do have a heating pad that I will put under there for her so that she's nice and warm if it is too cold like I used that um it was hard to keep her warm during the freeze but during the Texas freeze that we had we just I just put more of that in there and made it nice and cozy and when we did have electricity I would put that underneath of it and turn it on and she survived the freeze so that was awesome I also put more towels and blankets over her enclosure as well but um but yeah so do those things and you'll have a happy tarantula. <laughs>